I just want to very quickly introduce myself. My name is Nabil Rahman and I'm a registered social worker. I have been working in the field of social work, community development, and youth services for over 11 years now. My experience equips me with an interdisciplinary approach that looks at our lives as not just simply being individual parts, but being more holistic. But recognize that just because we are well integrated or well equipped to deal with the financial challenges that life has to offer, doesn't always mean that we might be ready to deal with our relationship challenges. Life is made up of its components and those components make up the entire whole. Through counseling, we explore some of the areas in which we might be struggling, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we actually don't have the skill sets to address it. It just might mean that we're not aware of our strengths and of our resilience. And counseling is a great place for you to explore that. So I look forward to us connecting. Ever wondered if counseling or therapy might be something that is of benefit to you, but you never followed through with seeking that support because of the stigma and the stereotype that surrounds it? Do you think that you're weak, that you don't have the skills and the resiliency to deal with what life has to throw your way, and that's why you need counseling? Do you think counseling is a space in which you lay down on a couch and just talk about your problems? I'm here today to tell you that that is the most farthest thing from the truth. Counseling is not a space in which we show our weaknesses, but counseling is a space by which we discover our strengths. We become more aware of ourselves. You know, life throws us many challenges. For many of you, you might have immigrated to Canada with a lot of opportunities and potentials. But dealing with the challenges that might be presented to you, such as language barriers, your employment situation, your financial stability, and your overall relationships with your family and friends. These challenges in a whole new environment can benefit from a perspective or a support of a counselor. Counseling is really a space through which you identify the goals that you have in your life and perhaps you also identify some of the challenges that you might be experiencing and how might you be equipped to overcome those challenges through your own resiliency, through your own skill development and perhaps just an insight or a perspective from your counselor. I know that speaking to a complete stranger is very difficult and it's hard to be vulnerable when you don't know the person at all. But that's the beauty of counseling. That in counseling, the focus is always you. You're never gonna find in a session of counseling that the counselor's problems are more important than you. The counselor is there to provide content to the context of your life. It is a collaborative relationship. Yes, you have to take the first step to be vulnerable with your counselor. But the beauty of that is that your counselor is there not to judge you, not to think of anything of you, but to be there to support you as you grow in self-awareness of yourself. Cognitive behavioral therapy simply looks at the relationship between our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors and how those three things interact with the outside world around us. Counseling is not about blame. Counseling is about feeling empowered and taking ownership, taking ownership over our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors, and accepting that there are certain things in our external environment that we cannot control and commit to working on things that we can. So if we take the example of feeling sad, the emotion of feeling sad is in and of itself not a bad thing. Sometimes things happen in life to make us feel sad. We might be thinking about somebody in our lives that has passed away and that makes us feel sad. Isn't it normal to feel sad about somebody who's passed away in your life? You might miss them. Feeling sad in that situation is perfectly normal and it needs to be acknowledged. But let's say what happens when that sadness we experience because we're thinking about somebody who's passed away and we're thinking about their memory. Now that sadness transfers into our day-to-day -day lives. We're thinking about it when we take the bus. We're thinking about it when we're at work. We're thinking about it when we're talking to our family and friends. And we continuously keep feeling sad. Counseling can be a space in which we can explore why that sadness is persisting. What are the thoughts 
that are behind that emotion? And perhaps what behaviors are you participating in that can either be contributing to feeling sad in situations that might not perhaps warrant feeling sad? Or what kind of behaviors can you be participating in that can alleviate, that can take away the emotion of sadness when it doesn't warrant you to experience that emotion? Counseling is for you. Counseling is for everybody. And I really look forward to supporting you in your journey as you explore yourself further and gaining an awareness of just how truly resilient and courageous you are for even thinking about counseling. I urge you to take the next step and utilize the services available to you so that you can achieve the desires that you have in your life.